everybody welcome back to my channel I hope you're having a Merry Christmas I'm trying to get a little bit into the spirit here um, I want to continue with our lesson on how to use our brother sewing machines we just barely touched a little bit on some of the stitches so let's go ahead and learn a little bit more what you can do maybe do a blind hem and a reinforcement stitch and while we're going ahead and doing that I thought it would be fun to make something for Christmas so this um, fabric here that I have here is um, got some cute little donuts and coffee and um, and kitchen stuff on it and I have a couple of different ones that I've picked up um, over time um, that have some different kitchen things on it you don't have to to follow me in in this you can just watch it to learn how to do the stitches or you can go ahead and make an apron um, so basically what I did was I took a piece of um, fabric and I cut it so that it was 17 inches long and 42 inches. It's just a rectangle. And then I took another piece of fabric and I cut it so that it was um, six and a half inches by 21 just because I'm going from scraps here. So I'm not trying to um, go out and buy fabric. I'm trying to use what I've got in my stash. So I have two of these that I'm going to sew together to make a nice long strip to go across the bottom. I have two long strips that are three and a half inches by 22 that we can use for the sashes. And then I also cut some pockets, which I obviously did not bring with me, but I'll show them to you as I start to sew them. So while we're sewing this together, we're going to learn a whole lot of stitches that our sewing machine can do. And I'm going to use a different brother sewing machine today. So you, if you've got a computerized machine, this one might have some uh, a screen that's more recognizable to you. But before we go ahead and do that, um, one of the things I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about needles. Um, I can't tell you how many times over the years I have had customers come into our store and stand in front of the wall of needles and basically, oh my gosh, I don't know which needle I need. I have a um, 1945 Kenmore sewing machine. What needle does it take? So the first thing that you need to know is that sewing machine needles are pretty basic. They're going to go from one sewing machine to the other unless you have a commercial sewing machine. They're all going to take a standard sewing machine needle. The reason why we have so many different kinds of needles on the wall is because um, there's different points on each needle and that's what you want to choose for the different kinds of fabric. It has nothing to do with what sewing machine you have. It has to do with what fabric you're sewing on. On. The universal needle, which is the most common one that most people are going to buy, has a slightly dull tip. And it's that way because it's supposed to go from wovens to knits without you having to change your needle. The needle is sharp enough to go through your woven when you're doing your quilting, but it is dull enough to go through your knits without damaging your knit. Now this one that I'm holding right here is um, a size 8012. The 80 stands for the European number, 80, 90, 100, 120. The 12 is the American number, 10, 12, 14, 16. So most um, needle companies will put both sizes on there, so you'll hear a needle referred to as an 8012 or a 9014. Um, so these are your standard universal needles that you're going to use for most of your basic cotton sewing. This is a jeans needle, and the word jeans is very misleading because all that really means is it's a sharp needle. So the, the point is very, very sharp, and it doesn't work for knits because the reason that it is sharp, it would more than likely damage your knit. But because it's really sharp, it also means that I can use it for a lot of different kinds of fabrics to sew through. I don't have to sew jeans. This package in particular has a 14, 16, and an 18. As you can see, I have not used the 18 in this. I don't like an 18 needle. It's gigantic. It's like a, you don't want to use a nail when you're trying to sew. You don't want a great big hole. Um, but a jeans needle, because it's so sharp, I could probably hem my jeans with a size 14 and do just fine. But the other thing about it, because it's so sharp, is that I can actually sew my silks and my satins and my rayons, my corduroys, um, just about any kind of fabric I want to sew, I can sew with my jeans needle. Now, while we're talking about sizes, with needles, the smaller the number, the so jeans needles actually come in a size 10. I don't have a package of size 10 jeans needles right now, but they come in a size 10 
which means that's for your lightweight silks and satins and it's sharp so it's not going to snag them. Um, 14, 16 is probably what I'm going to use for actually hemming my jeans. Another package of needles I have here is the size is the top stitch needles top stitch needles are sharp as well and i use them in a pinch when i can't find a denim needle they just have a really big eye and the reason that they're called a top stitch needle is because that eye is big enough that i can put thicker thread through it if i wanted to personally i don't sew with thick thread i think it's something i have to mess with my tensions too much and i don't want to have to do that but i do like the big eye if i'm going to use metallic threads or some of those difficult uh, threads that don't want to go through the eye good but the biggest reason why i use a top stitch needle is simply because i have a really sharp point this is an 80 12. with an 80 12 i can do that entire apron i'm working with and sew through the layers and not have a problem so this is the one i'm probably going to use now, while we're talking about the sharp needles, um, remember you can't use a sharp needle on a knit. And the reason why you can't use it on a knit is because a knit is going to have loops. Like when you're knitting a sweater and you're pulling one loop through another, what's going to happen if you were to cut that yarn? Then you start getting a hole, right? Well, this really sharp needle is going to make a hole in your knit. Or worse, it's going to start grabbing the... Um, Fabric, uh, the machine is going to get mad at you. It's going to be fighting against the elastic in the fabric. So this is a stretch needle. So this is what I tell people because they ask me all the time. Um, what's wrong with a ballpoint needle? Everybody used ballpoint needles during the 70s when we were doing stretch and sew. That was when we were sewing on bull knits. Now we're sewing on stretch suede and stretch denims and stretch velvets and all sorts of other kinds of stretch fabrics that actually have elastic in the fabric. And the ballpoint needle does not know to not fight against the elastic that's in your fabric. But one thing that's good about a, uh, a ballpoint needle and a stretch needle is that they are slightly dull. So um, let me see if I can do this. I'm trying to, this is the way I do it in class. Um, so we've got different rows of stitching and the ballpoint needle actually goes across and finds a hole and pushes through the hole like that. It doesn't poke. It kind of moves across and pushes through. So it doesn't damage our knits, but the stretch needle in particular doesn't fight with the elastic. So I like stretch needles. And if you've ever been sewing on a project and you're not thinking this is very stretchy fabric, but the machine is jumping and grabbing and pulling and gathering, and you're like, what the heck is wrong with my sewing machine? Try a stretch needle. It will almost always fix the problem. Um, if you're trying to hem a t-shirt or you're working with, um, I mean, people go to the fabric store all the time and buy crazy stretchy fabric and just think they're going to go home and sew on it. There's little tricks like using a zigzag when you're sewing on stretchy fabric. So um, that's just a little bit about needles. There's so many different things you can learn about needles. Um, there's embroidery needles. There's... Um, wing needles, there's double needles, um, there's a whole world of different things about needles and you can go and google it but I just wanted to touch on that a little bit before we get sewing on our sewing machine and today I'm going to actually use this package of top stitch needles because they're good and sharp and they'll be able to handle the fabric that we're working with. Okay, so we're sitting at um, the Brother Sewing Machine, and this one is actually the Brother 2450, but the screen is very much like the same as most of the embroidery machines and the top-of-the-line Brother machines. Um, you'll see right here that the straight stitches are the same as the ones that were on the 700 that we did last time. They're just on a touch screen now, so all I have to do is just touch it and it'll do those stitches, but the same rules apply. The two little lines at the top are going to make it do a reverse. The little dot's going to do an up and down stitch. The biggest difference on this machine is that to go to my decorative stitches, I push the menu like this and it'll move to my different stitches. Like here is my buttonholes. Here is some of my quilting stitches. Also with this machine, if this is where you highlight if you wanted to tie a knot 
and cut with the scissors. In the same way that we showed last time, it was over to the side. Now it's just right here where I can touch it. And this one's got a third button that will allow the machine, the needle to go down and the foot to come up automatically. That is a great feature. I really love it on this machine. And the fact that it's right here on the screen where I can turn it off and turn it on without having to go into a menu is, is a really nice thing. Um, this one also allows you to go up here to character decorative stitches. If I hit that, Here's all my decorative stitches. So instead of me having to push the leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, they're all just right here in menus. So I can push this button and scroll down. Here's a decorative stitch. It's gonna show it to me right here. If I pick a star, now I'm in sequence mode. Um, another big th difference with this machine is, see this little arrow thing here right here? If I push that, there's a hidden menu right there that a lot of people don't even know is there. Now I can change from large to small. See, now my star just got smaller. Um, I can also change the intensity of my stitch so that they're a little closer together if I want them to, if I'm using thin thread and they don't seem to be sewing out as close together as I think they should, instead of changing my length, which you really can't do, that's why the lines are here is telling you you can't do that. All I have to do is push that and it'll make it a little closer. I do, if I wanted to go back to this one, I do have to delete the last one and then change it. I also have the ability to flip that over a couple of different ways according to the stitch that I'm using. So if I put the star on next, I can come down here and put the heart on there. I'm going to make that a, a oh, there's the large heart. Um, so I can do a couple of different things with this. Um, let's just, I'm going to push delete, delete again. I'm going to make this small and then I'm going to put the star on there and then I'm going to put the heart on there. And um, then I'm going to go, I'm going to close this part here and close this. And there's another menu that's right here. It's just a scallop stitches that are in here, but it has these arrows that will allow me to go up. And then if I close this menu and go back to the menu I was in before and hit the heart, now my heart's up here. And then I can close it. And it seems like it's an awful lot of st uh, steps to do this. But it's kind of a fun thing to do if I want to create um, a little bit more um, dimensional stitch. And because this machine has got sideways motion, I can do that. And I can move it quite a bit up and down. I just always tell people when you're doing this, make sure you come back to the center. Because if you don't, then when the machine... Uh, repeats it, it's going to start moving to the side. So I'm going to go up a little bit here and then um, I'm going to go into here and tell it to repeat. You can see it's starting to go that way. Um, so that's why I tell everybody to go back to the center. So if I come back here and go this way, then tell it to repeat. Now it's just going straight down and it should repeat that design over and over again. Um, so this is a, a little bit, just a few more features than the last one that we did, uh, but you can kind of figure it out um, and you'll really enjoy kind of playing around with those stitches that this machine does. And there's a few other ones that we can go into a little bit later, but we're not going to do that today because we're going to just start sewing and we're going to um, do a blind hem first. One of the most um, difficult part to teach on teaching blind hems is how to fold it properly. And take my word for it, I've been doing this for almost 20 years and almost ne nobody ever gets it the first time. And I do like when you have a right side and a wrong side to your fabric, it does help a whole lot for it to kind of, um, for you to understand it a little bit better on how to do a blind hem. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fold this down just like you're doing the hem on your skirt and I'm going to press it in place. And then I'm going to fold it a second time so the raw edge is on the inside. We're going to press that nice and flat. Okay, so now here's the tricky part. What you're going to do is you're going to take your hem and you're going to fold it to the right side of the fabric. So if I were to look at this, 
on the right side of the fabric, I have almost like a cuff that's sitting on that side. On the wrong side of the fabric, I've got a little teeny ledge that's just kind of running along the edge right here. And we're going to put a couple of pins in this to make it so that um, it doesn't move. I forgot to show you where um, the blind hem stitches in your machine. And on Brother Sewing Machines, they're almost always in whatever menu that has this quilt stitch on it. Um, in this machine, it's the second menu. And it's going to look like this. It's going to look like a straight dash with a little zigzag in it. So you can see it right there. That's your blind hem stitch. This is also a blind hem stitch, but it's for stretch fabrics. I don't personally care for this one very much because the, all the zigzags can be a little bit confusing. But I do like this straight one with the little notches on it. You'll see that the machine is telling me to put my R foot on there. So we're going to uh, put our R foot on there and then I'm going to show you how this works. So we have this set up on the sewing machine. I have rethread the machine with pink thread. From my pink fabric i'm going to line the little divider that's in the middle of my r foot up with the inside fold that's on here and then i'm just going to start to sew and what it's going to do is it's going to make some stitches forward and then it's going to swing over to the side right there and it's going to grab that fold just a little bit. I want this fold to ride on this divider really close. I don't want to push it like this, but I don't want it to go this way either. I want to just keep that riding straight. Oops, I hit my knee, my pin. Remember to take your pins out. It just takes a minute. I'm a lefty, so sometimes I have trouble when I put the pins in like this, reaching over, take them out. And it's okay if it starts to go off the edge a little bit, um, because it, it'll look more like a hand done um, hem. The, the important thing, again, is to make sure that that fold is up against that divider. That's the most important part about doing a blind pin. We'll take that pin out, too. And it takes a little bit of practice, but one of the things I like about the Brother Machine is the Brother Machine. There's not an adjuster on the blind hem. It just kind of, you keep it lined up and it'll come out okay. So I'm going to hit my cut scissor cutter and lift this out. Let me see if I can show you the way this looks. See, on this side, I can't even see that, I ha that I've hemmed it. It's nice. And invisible which is the whole point of a blind hem it has little teeny tiny stitches on the inside and on this side it's it's hemmed so um, that's what we were trying to do and we're going to do it again on the other side of our apron the next stitch that I'm going to show you is an overlock stitch. And that's what this one right here is. If I select it, you can see it right here. And almost all the basic sewing machines have this stitch in it. Um, and it's really good for doing stretch stitches, but also works really well for finishing the edges of something that you um, want to hide the frayed edges on. And you don't own a serger, so you can't serge it. So we're going to do that one. And then um, it's telling me up here. Here on top to use my J foot but I'm going to use my G foot because I want to do this right on the edge of my fabric and I don't want it to pucker as I'm sewing it. Some of these stitches that are made for overlock stitches um, let's go down. Some of these stitches are going to actually show you the G foot when you're doing an overlock stitch that's made to go over the edge um, but some of them are not and this one um, for some reason does not tell you to put the G foot on there, but it's a it's a good foot to use for what we're going to do. So uh, we're in the second menu here and I've choose I've chosen number 208 and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. 
So I re-threaded my sewing machine with black and I put my G foot on. I have that stitch chosen. Remember I told you that I had um, two long pieces that I wanted to put across the bottom of the apron that were scraps so that they weren't as long as I, pos as I actually wanted them to be. Um, but I cut them wide enough to be a border or a sashing at the end of my apron. And now I want to sew this center stitch, but I don't want it to, to fray or look bad on the other side. Remember the days when we used to sew them and press them open and then pink them off with pinking shears or go ahead and do a zigzag across the edge? That's kind of what we're doing here, but we don't want to put all those steps in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, and I kind of should have showed you this foot a little bit better when you look at it. Um, it has a little metal piece like right here. Let me see if I can do this. This metal piece right here. And what that does is it lays on the edge of my fabric so that my fab when my machine does a zigzag over this way, it can't draw the fabric over and pucker it. It'll hold it flat for me. So I'm going to put this back on the machine. I wish I could get really close like some of the videos I see on other places, but I don't really have the equipment to do that. But we're going to get as close to the edge as we possibly can with that little finger. And then I'm going to just test it to make sure that when it sews, it doesn't hit that center finger because I don't want it to hit. I just want it to sew over the edge. And it's kind of going to have a back and forth motion, which is one of the reasons this works really good with knits. I can um, sew an, uh, a hem on a knit with this stitch very nicely. And I, I think I'm going to show that to you next week. Um, and we're going to make a little t-shirt. Um, but this time we're going to just use it to do this overlock and we're going to keep our fabric flat doing that. And I'm sitting at a weird angle trying to film this and do this at the same time, so I'm going to move it over just a little bit. I want this to rest on the edge of my fabric so that it doesn't um, just kind of wander off on me. Hopefully I got that right. I'm going to cut it with my scissors and lift it. That looks pretty good. That's what I was trying to get. See the way out my edge is really nice and finished? And when I open it and press it open, um, it's going to look like I put it on a serger, which is um, exactly what we were going for. We're back at the ironing board. I um, This is the black piece of fabric that we just sewed the overlock edge on. And then I took that and I sewed it on the bottom of my pink piece of fabric, just using a regular straight stitch. And I've opened it up and pressed it. Now what I want to do is I want to fold this part up and we're going to fold it so that it comes just a little bit higher than where the seam is probably about a quarter of an inch up like this. And we're going to press that really good. And then I'm going to take it to back to the sewing machine and I'm going to um, do a stitch right straight up the side here without catching the pink, just straight up to the edge here. Something like right to here, straight down so that we're finishing off that edge. So I went ahead and I sewed that part. And one of the things I didn't show you before is you should turn the edge up a little bit when you stitch it. And that way you won't have to try and figure out how to turn that down when you get this flipped around. So when I go to flip this around, I'm going to put my thumb in here and turn this part in. So that way I don't have any bulk. And then I'm just going to push it like that. So now it'll turn completely around and I'll have a nice flat corner. And I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm going to line this up so that it's going right down the center of my foot. And I'm going to do a decorative stitch 
um, that's in my machine. You know, being in a sewing machine business, I constantly hear people say, I just need a straight and a zigzag. That's all I need. I'm never going to use any of those other stitches. But if you start to see other places that you can use these stitches, you're going to use them. And what I'm going to use today is I'm going to use a, what's called a feather stitch. It kind of is made for quilting, but it makes a nice edge. So I'm going to start sewing it. And you'll see it when I get close to the edge exactly what it looks like. So if I continue to use the center of my foot as a guide, I'm going to go over both edges. Take that pin out. Line it back up again so that the fold goes right to that seam. And start sewing again. We're going to go ahead and close this up and finish it. So here's my decorative stitch that I ran across the, the hem of my um, apron. It didn't come out as good as I think I would have wanted it to do. Maybe I should have actually pinned it and turned it around so I could have stitched right in the ditch right here and it would have come out more even. Um, it's one of those difficult things to try and figure out what the best thing to do is. Sometimes I have actually hand sewn it to the seam on this side and then come back and top stitched it so that I got it absolutely perfect. This is for my daughter-in-law. Um, I think she'll like it. She's not going to be that particular. Okay, so we got that part done. So the next thing, sorry, the, the camera's wobbling on me here. Um, the next thing that I did was I took two pieces of um, square fabric. Uh, they're eight inches by eight inches. Uh, there's two completely different pieces. I laid them right sides together and I just stitched around the outside and I left a little opening right here so I could turn it inside out. And then once I had it turned inside out, I top stitched, I pressed it, pressed the seam that was open, and top stitched all the way around the outside. Then what we're going to do is we're going to lay this on our apron and turn the corner down to make a cute little pocket on our apron. Um, so did you know that your sewing machine will sew a button on? Uh, we've always done it by hand and you can do that by hand, but you can also put a button on it. And I want to put a fun little button that looks like this right on the front of it. So let's go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how you can do that on your sewing machine. So in your menus on your machine, you have a buttonhole menu and we're going to hit that menu and if you go down to the bottom, there's a thing that looks like a circle with a line through it that is actually sewing on a button. If your machine does not have this button on it, you can do it with a regular zigzag stitch. The most important thing that you have to remember is you need to drop your feed dogs. This machine will automatically drop your feed dogs. But other machines, if you reach to the back part of the machine back here, there's a lever that you can push. It'll drop your feed dogs. Then go back over to your regular menu and pick a zigzag stitch. The zigzag stitch is usually set for about a 5.5. And um, you can lower it down to like a 3.5. That's usually what most buttons are. If you look at a big button and you look at a little button, these holes are the same distance between a very small button or a very big button. So 3.5 is a good way to start, but never trust that. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. This is my button foot, and on most brothers it's the same foot. There's a few of them that will have a little blue foot that works the same way. My feed dogs are down. So when I go to lay my pocket on here, my button is going to lay on top of the metal and then I'm going to push it to the back like this. Let's see if I can move my hands out of the way so that you can see that I have it on top of the metal piece but under the white piece I've got two red dots here that are going to line up my holes. Um, there's a little plastic that goes right down here in the middle. I'm going to move that out of the way. The reason that plastic piece is there is so that if I wanted my button to be kind of sewed loosely on a coat or something, it would add a little bit of a shank to it to make the button a little looser. But I don't want it to be loose. I want it to be good and tight. 
So this is what I was talking about. When I have this set up, the machine doesn't know whether I put the needle in the right place, so I have to check it. See what ha what's happening? My needle's hitting. So I'm going to move it over just a little bit. One of the things I did wrong is I didn't make sure the foot was down. Make sure your foot is down. Um, it, that was loose. That's tight. The foot's down, so it should do a better job now. So let me test it. There's one. There's the other. The needle does not hit. It's safe. That way I know that it's the right width. Now all I have to do is hit my green button. My machine just told me I need to unplug my foot control. So now I've got a green light. So I'm going to push it. And it's just going to sew that button on and tie a knot. And then I can hit my scissors and cut it. And then when I lift it, I want to slide it out of the foot. And there I just sewed a button on with my sewing machine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this pocket on my apron and I want to line it up so that it's in the right place. So you want to lay your apron flat and kind of measure it out and make sure that you don't get crooked pockets. The last stitch I want to show you on your sewing machine today is this one right now on here. It's called the 105. Um, it's on your, on your um, main utility stitch menu and um, it's a reinforcement stitch. So when you choose it, it um, has a really intense stitch. It kind of goes front and back and front and back and front and back. It's a really good reinforcement stitch. It's one of those stitches that um, you would use if you were trying to hem your jeans and you didn't want to use thick thread. I think I mentioned that before. I don't use thick thread. This stitch will make a stitch that looks like a straight stitch that like you use thick thread, but you didn't. You used regular thread. It's very, very intense. If you make a mistake with it and you have to tear it out, you're going to be crying because it's not only going to be hard to rip out with your seam ripper, but it's also going to probably put holes in your fabric. So um, just use it for reinforcement. Don't use it for constructing. So I went ahead and pinned my uh, pockets exactly where I wanted them to be. And I have that reinforcement stitch chosen. And I'll show you as you start to stitch it. Now I'm stitching on black fabric with black thread. So it's kind of hard to see it. But as I start to stitch it, the see the way the machine kind of goes forward and then back and then forward and back and forward and back. That's how, how this... Um, stitch basically is becoming a reinforcement stitch and why I'm saying don't do this unless you know that you're not going to have to rip it out because if you have to rip it out you're ripping out three rows of stitching at once and it's a big pain in the neck um, and if you're a little bit worried about it sew your pocket down first make sure it's on there straight and it's not crooked and then go back and do the reinforcement stitch over the top of it um, so this is also a really nice straight uh, stretch stitch. If you want to use it on stretchy fabric and have something that has give, it works really good. So I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to have the machine um, pivot up so that I can flip this around. And then we're going to stitch all the way to the corner. And since we have this um, with the, the double square of the pocket so that it's lined already and the corner turned down, what we're going to do is we're just trying to make it go around in a square so that it holds that pocket on there really good. See, the machine's going to pivot for me automatically, which makes it a whole lot easier. I don't have to worry about reaching back and lifting the foot. I'm going to tap my foot and the foot will go back down. 
and I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I'm just going to go about halfway through here, and I don't need to do a reverse knot because the way this stitch is made, it, it'll be fine. So all I can just do is hit my scissors and cut it, and now I'm done with that. Okay, so what I've done is I went ahead and I took the top of the apron and I gathered it up and then I took the long three and a half inch strip that I had cut and I sewed it to the, the top of the apron. And this time I did it um, the right way where I took the right side to the wrong side of the apron and sewed it to on there. So that way when I go to flip it around to the front, I can tuck under a quarter inch and pin it down and then top stitch it. And I know that the right side of the apron is going to look right. Thank you, Mother. You are always right. I should listen to you in the first place. Um, and I don't care if the back isn't perfect, but the front's going to look really nice. Then what I'm going to do here, let me take and put a pin right here. So because I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew that. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to just roll them over and top stitch them like that. I have never gotten the hang of rolled hem feet. If you can use a rolled hem foot, then by all means go ahead and do it. I've just never been very good at it, so I don't like to show that. I considered it for a little bit, but I'm just not going to do that. So I'm just going to take my fingers, I'm just going to roll that under, and I'm going to top stitch right close to the edge, and I'm going to finish it up. And then I'll show you what it all looks like all finished. So here's our apron completely finished. I went ahead and I did the rolled hem around the bottom of the straps and finished it to a little point right here. Um, so I'm going to put it on. You can see probably needs a good pressing. Um, I, I think it came out really cute and I hope my daughter-in-law will really like it. Um, and I hope you learned a lot about some of the feet and the stitches that your sewing machine can do. I think we're going to do another one of these, maybe go into some of the stretch stitches and maybe even some of the heirloom stitches. So keep watching and you'll learn a lot about your sewing machine. Um, let me know if you like this project in the comments or if there's something else that you'd like to see me do on one of your sewing machines. Um, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.